So Alex, in your work with uh, trusts and their performance reporting, do you find them using statistical process control graphs in their work? Well, increasingly yes, but actually most trusts probably still use RAG rating as their most common form of performance reporting. Traditionally, we see SP, SPC used only in sort of quality improvement projects. And can you use statistical process control charts for assurance? So if I was a board member to, to have a feeling if I can hit or hit the target in future? Yes, actually SPC is fantastic for assurance. It's, it's much better than most traditional types of reporting in the NHS. And I think we have some examples that show why that's the case. So here's our first example. So here we want this indicator to have a target of greater than 40. Um, what decision should I be making from this graph? Well, basically, we know that 99% of all data in a statistical process control chart is going to fall between the upper and lower process limits, which is those two gray lines on top and below the data. And these limits are set at about 13 and 33, it looks like. If we want to be over 40, that's really never going to happen given the current system. So the decision you should effectively be making here is to redesign the system. And that's interesting because actually if I was to see this data in another uh, layout, I could see that we're actually achieving values of 30 at the moment and the target's only 40. So I might get the feeling that actually we're getting close to the target and we might hit it in future. Yeah, we see that quite a lot of people just kind of looking at the numbers and making guesses about how likely they are to hit the target. But these limits are set mathematically, so we know for certain that it's, it's almost um, impossible for this system to hit that target, regardless of how close the numbers seem. Okay, so another example now. So this is the opposite. So we're trying to be greater than 10. If I was looking at this graph now, what decision should I be making on it? Right, so as you say, this is pretty much the reverse of the last graph we saw. We want to be over 10, and our limits are at about 15 and 35. So if all of our data is going to be pretty much above 15, and we want to be over 10. We're, we're effectively guaranteed to hit this target all the time. But that doesn't necessarily mean that there's nothing interesting here. There may be a couple of other things you want to look at. So is this an indicator I can completely forget about? Not necessarily. There may be a couple of things you want to do here. Firstly, you may want to raise that target locally. You know, be a bit more ambitious. You know that you'll always hit that target. So maybe you want to raise yourself to an even higher standard. Or alternatively, maybe you want to look at how uh, sort of stable and predictable your system is. So we know that the width of the process limits um, shows us something about the volatility of the system. So wide limits mean a very volatile system, narrow limits mean a very stable system. So you may want to work on making your system less volatile, more stable, instead of just having it over the target. Okay, so our final example now here we've got the target line right in the middle of the process limits and very close to the average line. What decision should I be making from a graph like this? Right, so this is an interesting one. Um, targets in the middle of the process lines, or in the middle of the process limits, will often be hit and missed completely at random. So any data that falls between those process limits is basically due to natural variation, just day-to-day -day variation in the world. And we often see data like this represented on RAG tables as flip-flopping back and forth between red to green. So does that mean I could be celebrating one month um, that we've passed the target and perhaps um, upset the following month that we failed the target and in fact nothing's changed? Yeah, absolutely. And actually we see that quite a lot um, when we go out to trusts. We'll see people thinking they've either done really well or really poorly when actually the changes between red and green are just this, a target line in the middle of the process limits and hitting and missing due to natural random variation, not anything particularly good or particularly bad that they've done in a given month. So for one message for the health service we might give is that actually statistical process controls shouldn't just be confined to improvement projects, but could be used in target assurance at a board level. Yeah, not only can be used, but is arguably the best way to be assured of the system's capability to hit a target or not.